I'm going to go ahead and get started. So before we get started, I'd just like to thank everybody for attending my session today. I know you guys have very busy schedules, and so I appreciate you taking some of the time out of your busy day to listen to me talk about the reporting services expressions. So uh, just a brief introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Chris Albrechtson. I am a business intelligence consultant and trainer here at Pragmatic Works. I've been here with the company for four years now. And I typically uh, spend my time, about 50% of my time, doing training, either uh, virtual training or on site with clients. And the other 50% of my time, I pretty devote to uh, actually doing consulting work for clients as well. So I spend about 50% of my time doing both training and consulting. Okay, so really, that's enough about myself. We are going to start talking about uh, what we're going to be discussing a little bit more in detail here. So for today's agenda, we're going to focus on, obviously, we're going to talk about reporting services expressions. And since the title of this session was really called Advance, I'm going to take into assumption that you have some experience with reporting services already and uh, that you are familiar with the reporting services expression language. Uh, so if this is your, your first time taking a look at the expression language, I did a, another webinar here with Primatic Works about a year or so ago. And in that webinar, I did an introduction to uh, expressions. So I cover all the basics of what you might need to know uh, when you first are getting started off with the reporting services expression language. But again, for today, I'm assuming that you have some you know, experience of working with that language already. And we're going to talk about some advanced functions. And uh, they're really not so much uh, advanced. I don't think the syntax of them is too difficult. Uh, it's really more or less uh, going over some commonly used or uncommonly used expressions that people may not be familiar with. So we're going to kind of start off there. And then we're going to go, once we get done with that section, we're going to kind of uh, turn the page and we're going to go into um, using other Office tools, such as like uh, Microsoft Outlook and Link and Communicator and other Microsoft Office tools that you might already be utilizing within your company and how you can merge those, uh, those two applications almost into, uh, into one with using reporting services. Last but not least, we'll, we'll wrap up our session today where we'll actually show you how to use um, and launch Bing Maps from within inside of your reports. Now, I'm not talking about the, uh, the new map feature that was released in the R2 feature of reporting services, but we're actually going to um, utilize Bing Maps from an uh, Internet Explorer window. Okay, so that's our agenda for today over the next hour or so. And so I'm just going to cover, you know, what is the reporting services language? And so I covered this over, uh, I think, last time I did our webinar, we talked about the introduction to reporting services expressions. But the SSRS expressions are just simply VB.NET statements. So if you know VB.NET and you're familiar with it, you'll notice that this language is, is pretty familiar to you. Um, and also just a key thing that I'd like to point out here is that uh, just about every property within inside of reporting services depends um, on expressions. I may not depend, but you can set them up to be dynamic. So you can make just about any feature with inside of your report dynamic, and they can be data-driven through use, utilizing these expressions inside of SSRS. Okay, so that's just a, you know, just a brief rundown, just a brief introduction of what we're gonna be doing. So from here on out, we're actually doing demos. Yeah, I'm gonna jump back and forth here between the slides and our demos as we kind of are discussing, discussing each point. So the first one that we're gonna take a look at is uh, joining data sets inside of your report. And so with that being said, I'm going to jump out of here and I'm going to open up bids and within bids you can also follow along here in data tools uh, I'm going to do everything here inside of SSRS 2008 R2 uh, but if you're utilizing uh, SQL Server 2012 or 2014 you should be able to follow along uh, just the same because really nothing has changed between uh, 2012 and 2014 in regarding to what I'm going to be showing you today so everything is pretty much relevant so you, as you can see here I have two data sources already set up for my project. I already have my SSRS project right here called Demos, and I have a couple of data sources, so I'm utilizing our, our good old friend here, AdventureWorks. So I'm going to be utilizing both data sources, the regular AdventureWorks database and the AdventureWorks data warehouse. So if you're going to try to follow along, it's probably going to be a little difficult because you're not going to have all the scripts. Uh, but if you want to try to follow along, I'll show you the, the code on there if you want to take screenshots and you can uh, try to build this out as we go along. I will also be posting all of my demonstrations here on my scripts on my blog uh, 
over the next couple of days. So if you are uh, interested in that, I'll share my, my blog here at the end of today's session. So there's our two data sources. And I'm going to open up this first report right here called the join function example. And as you can see here, I have one parameter on this report. And I'm utilizing my data warehouse connection. I'm going to zoom over here to our report data tab. You can see I have one parameter called country and two data sets. Uh, this is just a demo, so I didn't go back and, and rename these data sets right here. Uh, but just bear in mind that it is a good practice to go back in here and rename your data sets instead of data set one, data set two. All right, so that's, there's our data. I'll go ahead and open up this data set one here so you can grab this screenshot if you want to. Again, I'll be posting all this on my blog later on. So there's our script for data set one. Here is our script for data set two. Okay, and as you can see obviously here by looking at our fields and looking at our parameters, it's pretty easy to figure out that we're probably going to be utilizing this one for our parameter dropdown. And this one right here is going to be actually populating the data that we see over here inside of our table within our report. So I'm going to come over here and click preview on my report. And let me get some, rid of some of these windows here so everybody can see the report a little bit easier. So I'm going to zoom in over here. As you notice, it's a pretty simple report. It's just a simple table right here, nothing too fancy. It's just the country that we have selected and the quantity of uh, items that they have purchased. As you can see from our text box right here as well, we also have a text box right here that's displaying the option that we have picked from our dropdown and our parameter. So I'm going to come back over here to country. I'm going to click on our dropdown. And you'll notice that we only have a single selection parameter set up for this report. So right now you can see I don't have the, the little check boxes next to each of these items. So these should all be single selection. So if there's the defaults to Australia, but if I come over here and select United States and click view report, we'll probably see more data. And you can see that our text box has changed. So I'm going to go in here and, and I'm going to change this into a, a multi-value parameter. So I'm going to come back over into our report data tab and open up our country parameters. And I'm just going to make this a multi-value parameter by clicking on this checkbox right here underneath the parameter properties for our country, our country parameter. And I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to come over here and click on preview in my report. And you notice our report rendered just fine. So you can see now we have a multi-selection parameter here. You see there's Australia, Canada, France, Germany, and so forth. Our report data still looks good down here. But you'll notice right here our text box is now displaying an error message. So I'm just going to come over here and click on our drop downs just to prove that you know we can pick multiple values. So I'll pick Australia and Canada and click view report. You can see our report's still working. We're still getting that error message there on that text box. And I'm going to come back in here and just select one product this time and click view report. And you notice that even when I select one parameter value, I'm still getting that same error message here within my report. Now the reason why we're getting this error is because we're working with a text box here inside of reporting services. And reporting services cannot accept uh, lists or arrays. And what I mean by that is this right here. So what's happening is that in our text box is essentially accepting only, it's only wanting to display one value. And our problem here is that we have our, our parameter which is a list or an array. And it's trying to pass that, that list or that array into that text box. And what that list or array might look like, it might look like this value one, you know, value two, you know, value three, and so forth. And the text box cannot accept that. It's, text box is only looking for one value at a time, essentially. So what we have to do is we have to alter our expression over here in our text box to bring this into a comma separated value. So instead of being on a list or an array where it's kind of going in this order, what we need to do is come up with a, another value so it's in a comma separated list. So it would be like value one, comma, value two, and so forth. Dot, dot, dot. So back over here in our expression, I'm going to come over here, and this is actually a placeholder, so this is a new feature in 2008R2. 
you can see I'm in my placeholder properties, and instead of my value of just referencing my parameter, I have to break out that array into that comma separated list. So in order to do that, there's a function down here inside of our expressions. I'm going to go here into, uh, let's see, text. And the, the function that we're going to use right here is called the join function. And it's going to give us a nice description of what it's going to do right here. And it's also going to give us some example syntax of how we need to create our, our expression. And luckily for us, this one is actually pretty straightforward. So I'm going to call this one, I'm going to reference our join function. As you can see, as I start to type that out, you get this nice little pop-up over here where it actually tells you how you need to write the syntax and which object that you're currently working on. So I'm going to come over here and select parameters.country.value. And I do a comma, whoops, comma, double quote, and there's my comma separation. And I'm just going to close that parenthesis like so. So now by using this join function, we're going to break up that, ra that array into a comma separated list utilizing this join function. So now if I come back out right here and I click OK to accept that change and I click OK here again, you can see that our text box value has changed instead of saying the, referencing the country parameter, you can see it now is referencing our expression. And now I can come over here and click preview and you'll notice we don't we no longer have our error here and we're now referencing that comma separated uh, values here for all of our parameter selections and they're all being displayed here within this text box just be mindful that if you have this text box up here or not the text box the your drop down parameter if you have a lot of values there in that drop down uh, that text box is going to grow quite large so you might want to come up with some other additional logic that says, you know, if the, the count of these values is more than 10, just let, you know, put a different value in there, like more than 10 or all or something like that, because this text box can grow to be quite large. So just be mindful of that when you're trying to utilizing that feature inside of your reports. Okay, we're going to move on to our next example. And so I, I wanted to cover that one first because we'll be utilizing this one here in a, in a future uh, demonstration. So I just want to make sure everybody was pretty familiar with that function before we jump into the next one. So back over here in our PowerPoint presentation, and I wanted to kind of review this one here, this one slide here, and then we'll jump back into it. We're going to start talking about joining data sets. And the, this function here is called the lookup function. And as you can note there from our description, it says it is a one-to-one -one relationship. So if you look real close here at our screen, you'll notice that I have a sales order number here from my um, order header data set. And I also have a sales order ID over here in my order detail data set. And I'm going to utilize this lookup function to join our two data sets together and merge those into one table inside of our reporting services report. Now, this is a new feature that came around, I believe, with the 2008 R2 release of reporting services. So if you're still using uh, you know, SQL 2005 or if you're using um, the R1 release of 2008, you're not going to have this, this function to use. This is a R2 and newer features. So let's jump back over here into bids and we'll discuss this next example. So I'm going to go ahead and close this report and let's go ahead and open up this next one called lookup function example. And on this one, I'm going to create two data sets. On this one, I'm going to be utilizing my AdventureWorks 2008 R2 database. And there's two data sets that I need to create here. Uh, the first one I'm going to create is going to hold that, that left-hand table that we looked at. And so this one's going to be called order header. And I'm going to reference that database and paste in my query. So this is the query that I'm using here for the first data set called order header and I'm going to click OK. The other data set that I need to create is going to be the other part where it actually is storing our uh, order quantity. So on this one, I'm going to call this one order detail. Again, I'm going to use that same database that I used before. And I'm going to paste in this query here as well. 
So I'll give you a second there to snag that if you want to. And then I'm going to move on to the actual demonstration piece of it. So again, I just wanted to show you guys how to create a quick data set real quick in case there was any people that were new to reporting services that just needed a refresher or learn how to do that, even though I skipped a few other steps, but that's fine. So I have my two data sets over here in my report now. You can see I have one called order header, and I have one called over here called order detail. So now it's time, it's time to uh, create our, our table and start working on the data inside of our report. So I'm going to right-click in here and select insert, and I'm going to select table. So I did as I right-clicked in this white area, went to insert, into table. You can also come over here to your toolbox and do drag and drop, however you prefer. And I'm going to move this and kind of do some basic formatting here because it will bother me. And back over here in my report data tab, I'm going to come over here to my order detail data set, and I'm going to take like order quantity, and I'm going to take and drag and drop that over here into the data section of my report. And now watch what happens as I come over here and let's say I want to take the uh, account number and drag that into our table as well. So I'm going to take account number, drag and drop it, and I'm going to get this warning message. I'll zoom in on this warning message. It says, only fields from the current data set order detail can be added. And what that is telling us is that when we first dropped that field called order quantity in this table, it has automatically scoped that table to only to be able to use that order detail data set. I can no longer use the order header data set inside of my table here. So if I come over here to my table and I right click and I go to table properties, you'll notice right here where it says data set name order detail, that is essentially defining the scope. So I can only use the fields here from order detail inside of that table. You can also see that same value by clicking F4 to go to your properties window, and you'll see it right here as well where it says data set name, order detail. Okay, so since we can't do our drag and drop feature here, what we're going to utilize is that lookup function that I just showed you in that PowerPoint presentation that I just spent a moment talking about there. I'm going to show you guys how to actually implement that here inside of your report now. So in this text box right here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to expression. So again, this is our same uh, you know, tried and true expression editor. And again, it's, this function is hidden, not hidden, but it's kind of hard to find through and dig through all these different functions that are available to you. Um, but underneath the common functions folder, and under miscellaneous, you're going to see this item right here called lookup. So again, it's under the miscellaneous folder underneath common functions, and you'll see lookup right here. Again, it gives you a description of what it's doing, and it also gives you some example code that you can look at for reference. The one thing to keep in mind here, as I had shown in that, in that slide, is that I zoom in here, it says this one is only good for a one-to-one -one relationship, meaning that you have you know, one record in one data set that matches to just one record in another data set. So I'm going to right-click and go back into expressions here, and we're going to start building out that expression. So again, I'm going to come over here to miscellaneous, come over here to lookup, I'm going to double-click on that, it will automatically add that function over here into my, my window. And the syntax for this is actually pretty straightforward, if you ask me. It's a matter of just knowing how to use the feature and some of the pros and cons that come along with it, which I'll discuss here in a moment. So here I'm using, using this lookup function. And within this lookup function, I need to map our sales order ID to our sales order ID from, our, uh, from both of our data sets. Now, they don't have to be named the same thing but you do have to have some type of key value or some type of value that has you know, some relationship here between both of your data sets. Okay, so as you can see, I have the sales order ID is common between both of my data sets, so I'm gonna use that. And you can think of this as kind of like an inner join in T-SQL, and within that inner join, you have your on statement. This is essentially what we need to define up here in our lookup is our on statement. So I'm gonna come over here to fields, and you can see I have my sales order ID, so I need to kick my sales order ID, I'm just going to double click on that. You can see it's added our expression for that field. So I'm taking my sales order ID from my order detail table, and I need to join it into the sales order field from my order header data set. So in order to do that, I can just come over here and do a comma and pick that other value. So now if you look real close, we have our sales order value from our first data set. 
we have our sales order ID from our second data set. So there's, that's like our on statement in T-SQL. Then after that, we have to do another comma, and this is, the co this is the field that we want to return back from our order header data set. So remember, our table is scoped currently to the order detail data set. And what we want to bring back is our account number. So this is what I need to add next. So if I come back over here, I go into data sets, and you see here's my order header data set, and here's my account number. So come over here to data sets, here's both of my data sets. I have my report, but the one I want to try to return is our order header, and the value I want to return back is the account number. So I'm just going to double click on account number, and as you can see, it's added this first function right here, but we don't necessarily need that here for our lookup, so I'm just going to delete that real quick. It's just a, uh, a lazy approach. I didn't want to have to go through and type all that out. And then what was nice about utilizing that is that it actually provided the scope or the data set name here, and this is a requirement as well. So that you're telling the expression which field you want to return and from what data set that you want to return. So let's kind of go through this again here real quick before we go and preview our report. So we're utilizing our lookup function. We have our sales order ID coming back from our order detail data set. We have our sales order ID coming back from our order header data set. We have the field that we want to return, which is the account number, which resides in the order detail data set, or I'm sorry, the order header data set. And then this is the scope, order header, of where we want to return that account number from. So now you can see our regs clearly line went away, letting us know that our syntax is correct. I'm going to click OK. And now watch what happens when I click right here and click preview. So before, as you notice, we weren't able to preview our report because we were trying to um, drag over that account number. But you can now see that we're bringing back our account number from one data set along with our order quantity from the other data set. And we've merged those together here into this one table here inside of reporting services. So if I wanted to, I could come back over here and give this a nice title. I call this account number. Give it a space and click preview. So it's a little easier to look at on your eyes, and now you can see we've now merged account number from our header data set and our order quantity from our detail data set into one single table. So again, that is a new feature that was uh, released in 2008 R2. So if you're using 2008 R1 or 2005, that's not going to work for you. You're not going to have uh, that tool to use. Um, also to keep in mind, that this is a nice feature to use only when you're kind of going across, when you, need, when you have data sets that are utilizing different source systems. So back over here in our design tab, in my case, they're both utilizing this, this one data source here called AdventureWorks 2008 R2. So it would have been a better practice for me to go back over here to my source query that's being used to populate this table and just do that join and do that relationship and have that stored in just one, in one data set instead of having to utilize two data sets. The reason behind that is because um, the database engine is going to be able to perform that join a lot faster than reporting services is. Uh, typically, this will be like kind of like a last case scenario where maybe you have data coming from like uh, Oracle and SQL or uh, you know SQL and SAP or whatever, and there's no you know logical way to join the data into in one query. You might have to break those queries into two data sets and then do your join here within your table. Just keep in mind that you want to try to leverage that database engine just as much as possible. Okay. So that was the, the lookup function. We're going to go and take a look at another example utilizing the lookup function here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one. And I'm going to look over, come over here and take a look at our lookup set function. So I'm going to come back over here to my slides again real quick. And let's go look at our next example. So you can see here, we, this again, this, these are all, this next one and the one I'm going to show after this, these are again, these are all R2 and newer features. So the next one we're going to take a look at is the lookup set function. And as you can see here, this one is a one-to-many relationship. I'm going to zoom in over here and look at our data real quick. Come on, let's get over here. So you can see here we have a data set right here called Dim Customer. We also have another data set over here called FAC Internet Sales. So our Dim Customer data is obviously coming from our dimension table in our data warehouse, our VentureWorks data warehouse. And our fact data over here is coming from our fact internet sales within our fact table of our VentureWorks data warehouse. And as you can see here, it's a one-to-many relationship. We have this one customer called John, and here's his customer key. But John has purchased multiple things uh, from our bicycle shop here at VentureWorks. 
So as you can see, there is a reference to his customer key for multiple sales order numbers. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to utilize our lookup set function in order to capture this information and store it in a table value that looks like this. Okay, so we're going to take that one-to-many relationship and display both of those into one single table, even though both of those records are coming from two different data sets. So back over here inside of bids, I already have our data sets created, so I'm not going to go through those here since we're already kind of quickly running out of time today. So I'm going to utilize these pre-built demos, and we're just going to walk through the expression piece of it. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to right-click and insert a table. And over here within our table, I am going to bring over our, let's see, our name. And then just like before, when we're utilizing our lookup function, if I come over here and try to bring over our sales order number, and I come over here and drop on that, you can see we're going to get that same error message that we got before. So you cannot mix values of different scopes within that same table without utilizing these lookup functions. So in order to bring back our sales order number into this table, we have to utilize that lookup set expression. So I'm going to right click on there and go to expression to go back into our expression builder. And we're going to work on building out our next expression. So back over here underneath common functions and miscellaneous, you're going to see there's this other set right here, or this other lookup function called lookup set. Again, here's our description. You can see it says one-to-many relationship. It also gives us an example of some code down here at the bottom of our screen. And we're going to go ahead and start building out this expression. So I'm going to double click on lookup set. And within this lookup set expression, it's the same kind of functionality that we talked about before with our lookup function. We're going to take our customer key from our dem customer table, join that into our customer key in our fact internet sales table, and we want to return the sales order number into our table, because right now our table is currently scoped to dem customer. So we're going to do that same functionality here. So I'm going to come back over here to my data sets, and I'm going to come over here and just double click on customer key. So there's our on statement, so there's our join. So there's customer key, and since they're named the same, I can just double click on that again. So again, we're joining on customer key to customer key, and now I have to pick the field that I want to return. So within my fact internet sales data set, I'm just going to come down here and double click on first sales order number. And again, I'm going to take off that open parenthesis in that first because I don't need it. And you can see it's also brought over the scope of where that is coming from. So right now, our expression is exactly the same as it was in that last example, except we're utilizing this lookup set instead of the lookup function. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now I'm going to come back over here and click Preview. And as my report renders, you'll notice our report ran, but our expression is still not quite right. As you can see here, we're getting this error message all the way down here within our report. And the reason for that was going back to that same example that we talked about previously over here in our join function that we talked about first today, where we had that array, and we're trying to pass in that array or that list into a text box. And we're having that same issue over here with our lookup set function, where this text box is anticipating only to have one record. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back into this expression, and we're going to utilize that same join expression to take that array and make that into a comma separated value. So I'm going to come in here and type in join just like we did before. And then at the end of our syntax here, all I have to type is comma and then how I want to you know, delimit those values. So I, just, I want to do a comma separated list again. So I'm going to hard code it right here essentially. So I did the double quotes and then within those double quotes I did a comma in a space, and I close that parenthesis. So now, if I come back in here and I click on Preview, you'll notice I now have all my records showing up here uh, for all my sales orders. Now, I wasn't anticipating that coming over quite as clean, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to space that out a little further and click Preview. And now you can start to see that my records are showing up on multiple lines. 
and that's because it's forward wrapping onto the next line. So if I always wanted to keep that into a, a single row like we had previously before I expanded out that column, I could come back over here into our design tab, right click on our expressions, and at the end of this, I can come in here and I can concatenate a carriage return into this string. So I'm going to do a uh, plus sign, and I'm going to type in VBCRLF and close that and leave that closed parenthesis there. That stands for Visual Basic Carriage Return Line Feed. So now, every time we run and preview this report, each one of those sales orders will drop down to the next, the next line inside of our table without having to adjust the column width. So I'm going to click OK and click Preview. And now you can see no matter how wide our column is here, it's always going to do a carriage return and break each one of those sales orders onto a new line with inside of our table. Pretty neat feature. I utilize that carriage return quite a bit and when I'm doing report development. Okay, so what we just covered there is we talked about a one-to-many relationship. So let me kind of come back over here to that slide just to kind of review what we just did there. So again, we had our one record here coming from our DIM customer. In our fact internet sales, we had multiple um, instances of that customer buying different products. And we had a failure within our expression the first time because this is a single text box right here. Let me do that in blue. Uh, this is a single text box here called order number inside of our table, and it's anticipating only to have one value. And when we try to pass in that array, by default, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fail on us because it's, it's seeing more than one value. So what we have to do is we have to join all those values together into that comma-separated list to get this functionality. So that is a, uh, a lookup set. And we'll go over here to our next example, our last and final lookup example before we move on away from this, is the multi-lookup function. So again, our multi-lookup function, again, we're going back to the one-to-one -one relationship. And this one is actually kind of doing the verse of what we just did. So let's go look at our example over here on the right-hand side, or left-hand side, I'm sorry. So in this case, this is our data set one. So on this one, we'll call it a data set one, where it has our categories and the subcategory key. But notice right here in our subcategory key that we already have that comma separated list. And then over here on this other data set, we have our subcategory keys, but this time they are in a list or an array where they're on separate rows. So we're going to utilize this multi lookup to kind of parse out our subcategory key from data set one, join that into our subcategory key in data set two, and then we're going to merge those data sets down here to our final result where we have our category description and our subcategory description inside of one table. All right, so this is by far the, the more complex of the three. So let's go ahead and walk through that example next. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to close both of these reports because I don't need these anymore. And we're going to go ahead and open up our multi-lookup function example. Again, I have two data sets over here in my report data tab. Again, please don't leave these named like this. Once they go to production, please go back and rename these. I would recommend doing that at the get-go. Uh, but just for demonstration purposes, we're just going to keep this pretty simple and just leave those with our default names of data set one and data set two. So again, in our data set one, this is the one that has our comma separated values. And in data set two, it has all of our uh, category keys in an array or list where they're on different rows. And so what we're going to utilize is, we're again, we're going to have to go in here and create a new table, and we're going to utilize that lookup set, uh, or a multi-lookup, I'm sorry, our multi-lookup function and create a join between both of these data sets. So I'm going to come over here into data set one, and within data set one, I'm going to bring in our English product category name. So I'm going to expand that out. And then over here is where we're going to create our expression to reference our English product subcategory name. So I'm going to right click and go to expressions here, just like we had before in the last three or four other demonstrations. demonstrations. And this time, we're going to utilize our multi-lookup. So again, underneath common functions and miscellaneous, we'll come down here to our multi-lookup. And I'm going to double click on that. And within our multi-lookup, we have to do it. There's a couple steps. There's a couple hoops that we're going to have to join in to do here. So the first one that we're going to do is let's come back over here and look at our data set. So on this first one, I want our subcategory value. And I'm going to join that into our other data set. 
call data set two, and we're select English product key. So again, we don't need that first, and we also don't need our scope here on this one either. So you can see here on this particular example, we actually are named something different. So on this one, it's called subcategory, and this one is called product subcategory key. So just to prove the point that you can do these even when the names aren't spelled the same. And then what we have to do here, um, actually, I'll skip this next point. Uh, so what you have to do here is, if you remember, so this is the value coming from our data set one. So let me flip back over here to our screen. Here in data set one, you can see that our values are in our comma separated list. So we actually have to parse those out to get it to look more of like an array. And this, um, each value is on this, each row. So there's another function that we haven't used yet here inside of bids. And on this one, it's actually called split. So this one's going to do the, the exact opposite of what our join function does. So I'm going to do split. And then after the split, I'm going to do a comma. And then I'm going to do my double quotes. And do my comma space. And then I'm going to close that parenthesis there. So we're going to take that comma separated list right here and parse that into an array so they're on different rows in order to join those into our product subcategory key. And now I have to define you know, which value that I want to return. So this is, again, this is our on statement, so we're joining this key to that key. Now I have to define which row that I want to return back or which field I want to return back. And in this case, it is our English product subcategory name. So I'm going to double click on that. Again, I'm going to get rid of the first. And again, we still have to define our scope here. So this one is called data set two. All right. And so if I, if I was to go into save and preview this right now, this would actually still fail on us. So the reason it's going to fail for us is because what we've essentially did is that we had that the comma separated list. We've broken that down into an array in order to do the join. But if we go and preview our report, let's just go ahead and do that now real quick. So I come back over here and I preview this report. You can still see I'm getting an error. So we're back to our, our, our problem that we had on the last two examples where we're trying to pass in that array back here into our text box. Even though our value was originally an array, we had to break that array by using, utilizing that, um, or I'm sorry, originally our values were that comma separated list. And I have to break that back into an array. So what I have to do now is actually join this back into that comma separated list again one more time. So I'm going to add our join function. And then here, I'm just going to do our comma separated list again one more time and close our parentheses. So again, we had our comma separated list originally. We had to break that comma separated list into an array. Then we had to merge that data back into our comma separated list. So I'm going to click OK. And now when I come over here and click Preview, you'll notice that I have my product descriptions from our data set one and our subcategory descriptions from data set two, and they are in our comma separated list. Pretty neat feature. I think once I break it down like that, I don't think it's quite as intimidating as it might have looked at first, or what we're doing there. Uh, but essentially, that's what's happening with it, where you have to you know, break it apart and then, then, then build it back. All right, so that is um, the amount of time that I was pretty much had devoted to working with our our, uh, our lookups. Let's go ahead and go into our last couple demonstrations here before we wrap things up today. Um, let's talk about uh, launching Office tools from your report. So I actually had a request from a client here where he um, wanted to launch an Outlook email from reporting services. And in order to do that, we're going to use, utilize um, expressions and we're also going to utilize um, reporting uh, URL actions in order to launch an Outlook report. So I'm going to jump back over here into bids, and before we do that, I'm going to show you the functionality, or actually you can do this um, outside of bids as well. So if I wanted to send an email to Devin Knight, uh, he's a coworker of mine here, you guys are probably familiar with the name. So I'm going to type in uh, Devin Knight at primaticworks.com, and I want to be able to click on this right here and launch uh, a window that will, I can send an email to Devin pretty quickly. So in order to do that, there's a function here called mail to. And you can see that once I press enter, I now have the ability to click on this with obviously my control button. And what will happen is I'm going to do this right now. It actually will fire up Outlook. And once Outlook opens, you can see I now have this new uh, email template. 
And if you look more closely, you can see it has pre-populated Devin's information here into this email to be able to send this email. So I had a client, I was working with a client one time, and they had this requirement come through where they were tracking projects and uh, they had kind of like a dashboard and they had some executives or some upper level management that were uh, keeping an eye on these projects. And if a, tro if a project ever fell behind, they wanted to be able to, to uh, you know, view, the, view that report to see the status of the project. And if it was behind schedule, they would want to be able to click on that, uh, that item within the report and send an email to that project manager. Well, the, the tip I'm going to show you next is to be able to, um, to implement that inside of your report. So I'm going to come back over here into bids. And I'm going to open up this report here called Email uh, Action Example. I have one data set here coming from the DEM employee table in AdventureWorks. So I'm just bringing back the first name, last name, and email address. That's all I really need for this demonstration piece of it. So I'm going to click Cancel. And here's my pre-built table. So I'm going to preview the report so you can see what it looks like. So going back to that example where I said where if I was uh, you know, some in management and I want to be able to click on this to send Guy an email, you can see I, I'm I would be able to click on this to be able to, to open up that, that Outlook email. So we're going to utilize that by utilizing that mail to function like we did over here inside of Word. So back over here in our design tab, I'm going to come over here to our email address. I'm going to right click and go to text box properties. Within my text box properties, we're going to go over here to action and we're going to select go to URL. And I want to create an expression, obviously. And what we have to do is we're going to utilize that same function that I just showed you there in Word, but this time uh, we're going to have to add some quotes around it. And watch what happens as I type this out here inside of my expression window. I'm going to type mail to and then colon. You notice as soon as I push colon, you notice that it's not just referencing just a, a string anymore. You can see it now has that underline representing that we're going to use, I utilize this mail to function. And if I wanted to, I could come in here and concatenate that, you know, like Devin's name, but then that would always be static. But what I can do is since I have that emails field inside of my data set, I can add that email address here to my expression. So now I'm going to be able to click on this person's name or email address and be able to open up Outlook and have this information pre-populated in the email so I don't have to type it up or look through it through the directory. So I'm going to come over here and click OK, and click OK again. And now when I come over here and I click Preview on this report, you notice, watch what happens as I take my, my mouse, my cursor, and I hover over that email, email address field. You'll notice that my indicator has changed, indicating that there is some interactivity there. And once I click on this, you'll notice that it'll fire up an Outlook email. One more time, you can see it now has guy's email address up here and this is all dynamic and I can come back and I can click on somebody else I can click on Kevin's and what's happening here behind the scenes is opening and is passing in opening up Outlook and plugging in his information here into this email pretty neat feature the one thing that I would recommend doing is that people know that you have uh, that action here is one to probably set up a tooltip on this tech box that says you know like send email and also, I would give it like a bold or a blue font with an underline on it to make sure that it kind of looks like a, a URL that the users can click on and, and hinting that there's some interactivity there. So it just lets them know that there's some uh, information there. And you could even concatenate your little tooltip. You could even put the person's name here uh, inside the tooltip. It says send email to Kevin. All right. So there's that piece of it. And you can even take that one step further. I have some other syntax here that I'm going to replace with that one. It's a little bit too long to type out here. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to go back into that action. And so what I showed you previously was just the email address. But what we can also do is we can also piece together other parts of the email as well. So you can see here we're still utilizing our mail to function and we're passing in our email address. But we're also going to pass in a subject and our subject line is going to be dynamic with our report name. It's also going to include a timestamp in the subject line. And then we are also can add values into our body of our email. So I just have some hard coded string here, but we could, we could be referencing other values from our data set in here, doing a couple of carriage returns here, and then some other hard coded string 
as well. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. So I can click OK and click OK again. And now when I click Preview and I come over here, again, I'm going to have that same Outlook functionality where I can click on Kevin or Guy or any of these other re records. But now you're notice instead of just having our two line populated, I now have my email or my subject line populated. Again, um, this is the name right here of my report. So it's called Email Action Example. And this is the execution time function from within inside of reporting services. And then this is also the body of our report. So you can see here's my header. Again, this is dynamic with our timestamp. And just some other hard coded strings here for our example. So you can get pretty complicated here with sending out some of these emails uh, from within inside of reporting services. Okay, so that does work here with inside of your development, inside of bids. This also still works once it's deployed out to the report server or SharePoint as well. So that's our uh, email action example. I'm going to close that one. And let's go over here to PowerPoint. And we'll go to our next item. The next one that you can do is you can also integrate reporting services with Office Communicator or Microsoft uh, Link. So if you're using one of those features with inside of your uh, your uh, corporation, your, your company, you can utilize uh, this as well here with inside of reporting services. The only difference really between our syntax is kind of hard to see here in this little screenshot, is that you replace the mail to with this SIP colon. And you can, you can find the, the reference to SIP here within your directory, within your, uh, 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 within an Outlook. Just come right here, click on email addresses, and you should see an SIP address here. Usually it's just SIP colon and then your email address, but it could be different depending on uh, how this was all set up within your company. So going back to that example I was talking to you about earlier where I had that report and I had that report and they wanted to be able to uh, uh, contact pro project managers and they want to be able to click on a, an action within inside of the report and within that action they want to be able to launch an email. Well, they also wanted to have the ability to uh, contact them via link. So if it was something that maybe wasn't quite as, port, as important, they would use email. But if something was really important, they wanted to be able to be able to contact them directly by clicking on an action within a report that would fire up a link or communicator. So in this case, I'm just going to come over here. I'm just going to set up a, a, a text box that's with a hard-coded value just to show you what it looks like. So again, instead of using the, the mail to function here, I'm going to utilize that SIP function. And don't ask me what that stands for. I, I, I do not know off the top of my head. Uh, but let's say I'll do dnight at pragmaticworks.com. Be sure I spelled that right. Yep. Okay. So now, in theory, if I come in here, let me see if I click preview if I can even see that text box. So you can see this is what our syntax is going to look like. Okay. Just want to make sure that that looked correct. And I think I missed my colon there, so let me go back and add my colon here before I paste that over into our action and it not work. So I'm going to copy that out. And as I copy that out, and I come over here and I right-click on that text box and go to text box properties. I'm going to go to action. Again, this is going to utilize that same URL, URL action that we discussed with opening our emails. I'm going to paste in that same expression here. I'm going to click OK and click OK again. And I'm going to come over here and click on Preview. You can see here's my text box. You can see as I hover over it, my indicator has changed. And I click on that and watch what happens. I'm clicking, 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 clicking. And nothing's happening here inside of bids. So this is one of those things where, for some reason or another, the functionality doesn't work here with inside the development environment inside of bids, or uh, I think this probably the same thing applies for data tools as well. So in order to get this functionality to work, you actually have to deploy this report out to the SharePoint environment or your um, reporting services environment. So I have another demo that I've already built out and deployed out here into um, Report Manager. So I'm back over here into an, um, a sample report manager that I use for uh, demonstrations. So I'm going to click on this email action report. And I have two actions. I have one set up over here in our email address that I just showed you, like Guy and Kevin. So I just showed you those. But you notice I also have this text box over here called dnight at pragmaticworks.com. 
There's also an action here. So now that this report has been deployed, I can click on this. I'm going to get this nice little warning message to say, hey, do you want to allow this to open? I can click on that to allow. And I can click on this, and you can see it's going to fire up link, and it's going to fire up an IM session here with Devin. So I can immediately IM Devin, I can call Devin, and I can send him a message. So I can say, uh, I can send him a message. Hopefully he's not doing anything important, and he's not even connected to a uh, link right now. But you can see that if he was, I could send him a message all through here with inside of my reporting services report. So nothing, um, nothing complicated there. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that this functionality will only work once the report is deployed. So pretty neat features. You can also do the SIP in here inside of Word as well. So if I wanted to, I could do SIP colon and then dnight at pragmaticworks.com. And I can click on this here as well. And it'll launch up that same uh, IM session there inside a link. So pretty neat stuff, pretty cool stuff what you can do there where you can integrate the Microsoft Office features into your reporting services reports. Last but not least, this one's a pretty quick example. And in this example, uh, we're going to launch a Bing map, and then we're going to show you guys this real quick, and then we're going to call it a day. So back over here inside of bids, what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, combinations of our expressions and report actions, just like we did in our last example. Um, we're going to parse those into a URL string and bring back a Bing report or a Bing map. So back over here, my Bing map example. And I'm going to click Preview. And you can see I have a lot of cities here. I'm just going to show you the completed version, and we'll go back and look at the expression. So here is uh, Seattle. As you can see, as I hover over Seattle, you can't see it, I lost it. It's actually going to fire up Bing Maps. And Bing Maps is going to open up in a new window. And you can see it's already brought me into Seattle, Washington right here. And it's doing that based on my data. So my data is driving that URL that's being passed over here into Bing. So if I go back over here to our design tab, you'll notice in my data sets I have city, state, province, code, uh, country, and region. I'm going to right click on that text box, go to text box properties, go into action. Again, I'm going to my go to URL action. You know, let's take a look at our expression real quick. So you can see here I'm just linking into this uh, MSN map, and you can see I'm just concatenating this URL with my data from my data set. So here's my city, uh, state, and my country. And then also one of the requirements uh, for this to work is that you have to provide a region. So this is just some other additional logic that we had provided. So based on which country we were looking at, um, region for Australia need to be three, Canada and the United States need to be zero, and everything else would just be uh, null, or one, I'm sorry. Uh, so you can see here, that by utilizing both just the URL and our data, we can make this you know pretty dynamic. So you might be thinking, you know, yeah, a Bing, a Bing map might be look, uh, look might look nice and pretty over here. So that may not you know transfer over into the real world. Uh, unfortunately, that's uh, actually not true. You can actually make that uh, quite um, complex and quite useful to your user. So you could have this um, launch over into um, an internet site. So if you have an internet site where you want to be able to come over here and click on um, a customer information and open up uh, that same com customer inside of a different you know, uh, internal site that you have within your company. I was actually working uh, last week with a hospital, and a hospital was one that able to click on a report that had patient, patient information in it and to be able to link it to another internal um, website that they had created where they can go look at other um, specific patient, patient information they're passing in different parameters here into the URL of um, that string. So it's pretty neat stuff that you can do there. It's nothing, nothing too complex. It's just a matter of knowing that you can do it. And um, you know, here for me to show you guys how you can actually you know, take that logic and implement it inside of your reports. So that pretty much wraps up everything I had today. Uh, I think we covered quite a bit in that short amount of time. This is my contact information. Here I'll zoom in in case you want to see it. Uh, there's my email. This is also my blog. I'm also creating a, uh, a WordPress blog, so I'm slowly transitioning some of my blogs over to another WordPress blog, but this is where I'm still writing most of my blogs at currently. Also, before I forget, if you guys are new to working with reporting services expressions or you want to, uh, you know, a little cheat sheet, here within our website, here on ProMaticWorks.com, 
underneath Learning Center and Resources. You'll notice that we have some white papers and some other documents here that are free to help you out. But if you come over here and you click on Cheat Sheets, uh, underneath Cheat Sheets, you're going to see we have some cheat sheets, and one of these is right here for your SSRS expression cheat sheet. So these are commonly used expressions. You can print this out, hang it up in your cubicle at your desk at work, and you can reference this instead of trying to memorize all these expressions that you're going to create. Um, also, with that being said, um, uh, I would recommend creating some type of a expression library that you want to keep personally or that you can share with your group because you're, as you're creating these expressions on a, on a daily basis, some of these uh, expressions can get complex. You might forget it. Uh, so it's nice to have a little bit of a library stored up that you can use and, and take with you um, once you're going from reporting environment to a reporting environment. Uh, so with that being said, let me flip back over here to our slide. Uh, thank you again for attending today's class. I hope you learned something and got something out of it. And uh, stay tuned for my next webinar, whenever that may be.